Prime Minister Narendra Modi's three-day visit to Australia this week coincided with a year since Labour Party leader Anthony Albanese was elected Prime Minister and gave a fillip to growing bipartisan ties. But it was the celebration as well as the concerns of the Indian origin community that appeared to overshadow all else. Prime Minister Modi said that the real reason, the real power behind the bilateral relations came from people of Indian origin in Australia. In fact, the City of Parramatta Council in Sydney, New South Wales, has elected Councillor Samir Pandey as its new Lord Mayor, making him the first Lord Mayor of Indian origin in the city's history. Samir Pandey's election to the post coincided with the Prime Minister's arrival in Sydney, and he joins us live at the moment on NDTV. Thank you so much for joining us, Samir. Now, you are Parramatta's first elected Indian <laughs> origin Lord Mayor. As we know, Parramatta is home to a vibrant and diverse community from South Asia. It also just got a little India now. It is the geographical heart of Greater Sydney and a major economic powerhouse. How exactly do you feel? I feel very humbled. I feel um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's humbling for me, but also for the community. It's a, it's a matter of, of pride for um, the entire Indian diaspora here. Uh, I think uh, it's something which uh, has taken a while. I think uh, we have quite a few politicians, but uh, um, to get the top job at City of Parramatta is something which uh, um, is uh, very humbling and a privilege um, for me. Right, you touched upon this briefly, but the footprint of the Indian diaspora is quite significant in Australia. We've seen the crowds that just turned up for the Prime Minister's event in Sydney. But how is the relationship between our two leaders viewed locally in Australia? I think people have um, take pride in the relationship that we have. People pay, take pride in the people-to-people -people relationship that we have between Australia and India. Um, uh, in the past year or two, uh, I would say... A number of Indian uh, politicians uh, and federal um, ministers have visited Sydney, which has strengthened, again, the relationship. Uh, there has been a number of uh, pact and agreements which has been signed um, locally as well. There is an uh, announcement of uh, establishment of a centre for Australia-India relations, which is funded by the government here. And all those things shows and reflects on the, the strong relationship and bond that Australia has with India. Right, you've also repeatedly laid emphasis on smart cities, but just touching upon our new mobility and migration pact that both our countries have signed, we are expecting more Indian students to travel to Australia now for further studies and for employment opportunities. How do you plan to ensure that they thrive in a safe environment? In the past, uh, I'm talking about several years ago, there has been concerns, but at this stage, there is no, um, I do not see any concerns in terms of um, the safety of Indian students. I think the government does recognize that there has been um, issues in the past, and this is we are talking about a uh, while ago. Um, at this stage, um, we interact with quite a few students, um, and uh, their conditions are quite uh, um, good. Um, the jobs are there. Uh, the education, obviously, there is um, education is a is a massive uh, um, factor in terms of economy. Uh, in Australia. So the government has focused on the safety of the students, um, welfare of the students. That's a top priority for a lot of local government as well as state and federal government here in uh, Australia. So I don't see that there is uh, uh, concerns um, in that space at this stage. Right. Also, is there a plan in place to ensure Indian students who eventually study in Australia have a chance to work there? Now, we know we are witnessing turbulent times as far as the global economy is concerned. But in the backdrop of that, is Australia a safe bet for Indians who are looking to make Australia their home? Yes, indeed. Um, I think uh, the government, the students who come here, they have a visa category where they can um, stay back and work for a certain period of time. And I think a lot of students, they take advantage of that. They stay back and they can work full time. So that's that's option is there. Um, obviously, the visa process has, stay, uh, has changed a bit if you look look back from last five, ten years. Um, but still, there are several um, areas in demand where students can study and then have a pathway towards permanent residency. Um, while studying as well, they have op they have uh, they legally can work for a certain number of hours, um, which is changing now. It's full time now, but that will change to um, 20 hours a week. Um, uh, in the next coming few weeks, 
but there is there is uh, plenty of uh, jobs uh, for international, international students. Um, the unemployment here is almost at its lowest, which means that people do find jobs, and, uh, um, and that's one good thing about uh, Sydney. There is plenty of jobs. Right. Samir here is wishing you the best of luck as you lead the council of one of the fastest growing centres in Australia. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for joining us on NDTV. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.